welcome to another episode of the Heartland Franchise Guide, your insider's guide to all things franchising in the local area. I'm Blake Martin, local small business franchise owner and your Heartland Franchise Guy. This is the place for advocacy, resources, and education on all things franchising in the local area and a great place for local entrepreneurs to stop by if they just want to learn more about the industry. Speaking of more about the industry and topics that are applicable to all things entrepreneurship, whether it's franchising or not, our guest today is going to talk to us about sticking with year-end goals. And our guest today is Mr. Van Deeb. Thanks for joining us, Van. Thank you for having me, Blake. I appreciate you inviting me here. Absolutely. And the timing of you being our (laughs) guest couldn't be better because just to embarrass you a little bit. Okay. We now have our guest. We're nearing the end of another year, right? Getting into the fourth quarter of another year. And of course, Van has quite literally written some books on the topic of sticking with the goals. Yes. And figuring out how as an entrepreneur to stay motivated even if things aren't going exactly as planned. (laughs) That's right. right. Yep. Right. So you're going to give us all the golden nuggets today on that topic, and we appreciate it. Well, that's a lot of pressure on me. (laughs) That's why I brought you here. Absolutely. And I'm a big fan of yours, by the way. So congratulations on all the great things that you're doing for the city and for entrepreneurs in in business. Well, thanks. I appreciate that. And and now let me just give everybody the quick list of, if you're introducing Van... We've got author, entrepreneur, motivational speaker, Mm. success coach, Mm. podcaster. Mm. Oh, and by the way, right now, the latest project is The Journey. Yes, your radio radio show. show. Yes. Yeah. Talk to me a little bit about the radio show. Well, I got a great guest that's going to be on pretty soon. I think his name is Blake. (laughs) Um, But, you know, The Journey, the radio show is all about um, people's lives, not just the successes that they've had, but their journey to get there. And it's just interesting what people have gone through and how they've changed and evolved to get to where they want to go. And, you know, our topic is goal setting. And, you know, everybody, I don't care what it is, you've got to have some sort of idea of where you're headed. Yeah, yeah. And the journey is kind of fun because I get to interview people on, you know, on their backgrounds, on where they've been, where they've headed, their, Mm -hmm. their failures, which I've always you know, said that we learn more from people's failures than we do their successes. And so people really open up on the show, and I'm pretty excited about it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it was a great experience for me, as you referenced. Yeah. KCRO.com. So they can. KCRO. AM. AM 660 AM, but KCRO.com, and they can listen to it whenever they want. Every episode. Your episode. Fabulous. And I appreciate that segue, because it is kind of the perfect segue into the topic for today, which is, and we all go through it. You get near the end of a calendar year or whatever you're using as your metric for right. goals, mm-hmm. and particularly for entrepreneurs. Mm-hmm. I mean, let's be honest. Some people who are listening to this who are in corporate America and thinking about taking that jump, mm-hmm. you know, um, what they're used to probably is what I was used to in corporate America, which is, okay, here comes some more planning. That sounds mm-hmm. wonderful. Let's do some yeah. goal setting. Let's have a strategic planning session to plan the strategic plan for the annual goal. <laughs> yeah, right on. So you get a little Overkill. jaded. Overkill. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh-huh. And you get a little jaded on, okay, great, I'm going to set goals. Big deal. But then you get into entrepreneurship, and it mm-hmm. does become particularly important, mm. which I think is why, frankly, you're so well-read and so listened to. Thank you. Can you talk a little bit about why you think just goal setting in general and sticking with goals is so important for entrepreneurs? Well, entrepreneurs are a different breed. We have creativity. We have ideas. We, we change things. We, we make things better. And um, we have big goals. Entrepreneurs have big goals. But they're just mere fantasies and dreams if we don't put it in writing. And if we don't make it a actionable item. So everybody has different ways that motivates them and how, how to attain their goals. Well, here's a sad fact. 97% of all entrepreneurs do not have written goals. Seriously? That's 97%? A, 97% of entrepreneurs do not have written goals. So what that wow. means is, is that people spend more time planning their kids' wedding or their family <laughs> vacation than they do on their own goals. 
and what I say, and I can only preach to what works for me and what I've witnessed from other entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. Put it in writing. I, I really believe that if you don't put it in writing, it's just, a, it's just a fantasy and it's a thought. If we put it in writing and we manifest, you know, what we're trying to accomplish. So what I recommend is, and I like to keep it simple. I'm one of these that don't overthink the obvious. Don't over, you know, it's, it's, this is the task at hand. Yeah. You get a pad, a pad and a pen. You write down what your one-year goals are. And then you break it down to quarterly, to monthly, uh -huh. and then to weekly, daily, and then hourly. Hourly. And hourly. And the reason why that works for me is, let's just use a figure. Now, not everybody's goals are money. However, entrepreneurs, a lot of them are, because that's how you stay afloat is by making money. So money is a very important factor for an entrepreneur. So let's just use to be, just to keep it simple, let's say your goal is $100,000 mm -hmm. a year. Let's just say that's your goal. Well, that equates to $8,333 a month. That equates to $2,400 a week. Um, it, break it down to daily, hourly, it becomes like 240 some bucks an hour or whatever it is. So the reason why I break it down hourly because it's, it's going to be lodged in your mind that every hour is important. It will hold you accountable. If someone says, hey, Blake, do you want to go to lunch today? Well, you may look at your calendar and you may only allow an hour or mm -hmm. 45 minutes. You know that if you make it two hours, you're dipping into your work time and your goal time. So I believe when we put it in writing, one, mm -hmm. two, break it down, and then make it actionable by holding yourself accountable that these hours are, if you don't do what you're supposed to do, you're not going to achieve that goal. And I say, look at this every day. We all have time to pray, and we all have time to look at our goals every morning when we get up. And if you look at your goals, you're going to stay with you all day long of what you need to to hold yourself accountable for. Where do you write yours down? I just have a yellow, I just have a legal pad that I write down what I expect out of myself that day. And I'm a big fan of talking in the mirror. I know oh, yeah. that sounds a little crazy, but I've been doing it my whole life because who else is going to get me to where I want to go unless it's the man in the mirror? It's, it's hard to argue with. Yeah, the person in the mirror is going to get you where you need to go in life. Now, if you're blessed that you have a support staff, uh, a great, um, you know, um, significant other, mm -hmm. a great boss, maybe, you know, great employees, managers that hold you accountable, you're very fortunate. But a lot of entrepreneurs don't. True. A lot of entrepreneurs are one and two people company. And or even five people, but a lot of times it may be one. Mm -hmm. And then, but so we need to be our biggest cheerleaders. So you can't, you can't be ashamed or feel awkward by looking in the mirror and saying, I expect really big things out of you today. Do not come home unless you've been productive. I mean, what that does for me, it sets in my mind what I expect out of myself today. And I'm not spending thousands of dollars taking a course on, yay, let's get motivated. Right. If we can't, as entrepreneurs, we're charged with motivating ourselves. We really are. But like I say, if you have the support of a significant other, Children, coworkers, friends, family that care deeply about you, that's a huge bonus. Don't depend on that. Right. Well, and is it's the toughest audience you'll have all day, right? <laughs> yeah. You're talking to yourself in the yeah. mirror. <laughs> yeah, and you know, it's worked for me my whole life. I mean, I I believe I'm I'm a real big fan of visualization. Mm -hmm. And I believe if you close your eyes and talk about goal setting, Blake, if you close your eyes and Think about, 
you know, your goal and what that's going to look like in a year, two years, five years, where you see yourself, where you see your family because you're accomplishing your goals and you visualize this. I believe it's just a matter of time before that dream, that mindset is going to come into you and be part of, is going to be part of reality. Yeah. But it's like Napoleon Hill said back in 1937 in his book, Think and Grow Rich. If you can conceive it and believe it, you can achieve it. Well, I believe that goal setting has a lot to do with that. If you can conceive what your goals are and believe that you can accomplish them, you can achieve it. Very well said. Can't argue with Napoleon Hill either. No. I mean, it's timeless. 1937, and it's still like the number two bestseller of all time. I think you might have told me that. Possibly. Not sure, yeah. Certainly one that I've read you, multiple times. You know more facts than I do, so I, I turn uh, to you for facts. Well, <laughs> maybe or maybe not, but I got a follow-up question for you that you're going to have to answer, which is, so you've set the goals. Yes. You've had the conversation in the mirror or yeah. with a significant other or with the business advisor, and then it doesn't happen. You're behind. You're entering the fourth quarter, and you're not hitting your goals. Mm-hmm. How do you respond? How do you advise people to respond to that? You take a deep breath and you say to yourself, I'm human. If this was going to be a given, I wouldn't have to work for it. Um, You've got to accept your failures with your successes. Put a smile on your face and say, it's not done yet. I know it's November 15th and, or, you know, November 30th, I got one month to finish to hit my goals. Mm -hmm. Work your tail off to get there, and if it doesn't happen, guess what? E for effort. I give you a big E for effort, and be proud of yourself for the work. Because without the four-letter word, nothing happens. W-O-R-K. Don't beat yourself up because you didn't hit your goal. Now, let me tell you something. I love setting goals in December. So... I would spend a big chunk of December laying out my goals for the following year. And this is how out there I am. (laughs) We're about to get into Van's brain. (laughs) On January 1st, on January 1, when everybody's probably, you know, hung over or whatever they're doing on January 1st, I'm up in the morning and I am so excited. I'm so fired up to bring in the new year. I'm going over my goals. Kind of hard to get a hold of somebody to do business on January 1st. But I'm spending January 1 watching football. But I'm also, <laughs> I'm also going over my notes on what I expect out of myself this year. And I take time in December to do that. Regardless if I hit my goals for the year ending in December, I'm still getting excited, and I make that an event. I make that like December 18th from 2 to 4. I'm going to sit down and write my goals for the following year. I'm going to lay my plan of attack out. You know, I know people that if you're going to quit smoking January 1st, maybe that's a goal. You go out December 30th, and you buy all kinds of candy so you can eat that instead of lighting up a cigarette. Uh Maybe you're going to quit drinking. Maybe it's a personal goal, not just business. You prepare for that day. Yeah. Preparation. Doesn't just happen overnight, does it? No, sir. It's a journey. So it might be helpful. I'm presuming that most of the folks who are watching this episode, they know a little bit about your successes, right? Okay, the end game and and the real estate business and so on and so forth. Can you talk to us a little bit about some of the failures you've had as an entrepreneur? Oh, yes, but you don't have a 30-hour show. <laughs> so we can Just only pick talk. one short one? We keep Dylan here for a couple of days. Well, that's okay. He's paid by the hour. <laughs> uh, Dylan, the greatest producer on the planet, by the way. Amen. Um, so, yeah, let me just tell you about one of my biggest failures that is correctable is not listening. Hmm. Is I've left meetings that I didn't get the deal because I couldn't keep my mouth shut. I'm so excited about what I want to deliver and my product, my service, whatever I'm selling. It's probably real estate because I, this is my 40, coming up on my 40th year in real estate. That's Congrats. a blessing. Yeah, it's a blessing because I love 
helping people with the biggest investment of most people's lives, Mm -hmm. but not listening. Now, I'm real hard on myself, so I may have left that meeting and everything was fine, but I don't think it was. Mm. And so I think that we have to be our own worst critics because most people won't tell you what you're not good at unless they really love and care about you. Then they're going to be, you know, they're going to give you constructive criticism, which I I embrace. I want people to say, you know what, Van, if you would have done it this way, you probably would have gotten the deal. But I can recall being in living rooms where they're saying we're going to pick one realtor and we're going to interview three. Mm -hmm. And I left there going, I know what I did wrong. Yeah. You know, I didn't ask them enough questions. Um, So I'm constantly critiquing. But here's my biggest fault. I don't want to lose one deal. I go in every opportunity like I deserve it. I don't want to lose one deal. Most people are like, yeah, I got 60% of the calls I went on. That's an awesome accomplishment. That's a great accomplishment. I want it all. And if you have that attitude that you want every deal that you go after Mm -hmm. and you only get half, that's you shouldn't be upset with yourself. That's why if you don't hit your goals for the year, same concept. Be proud of yourself for the attitude and for working hard. What about resetting the same goals? How many years in a row is too many, if it exists, for resetting the same goal? I goals? reset the same goal usually every year. Do you? Yeah. I mean, every year I had a number I wanted to hit, and mine was in real estate – it was the transactions, how many I wanted to do, mm-hmm. and how, and then there was a dollar figure. But mostly it was transactions because transactions motivated me. I didn't feel comfortable just looking at a dollar sign of what I'm trying to accomplish. But if I had a transaction number, it, it made it more fun for me to try to accomplish. Because if I hit my transaction number for the year, I'm going to hit my financial number. Uh-huh. And it's very measurable, right? Right. Yeah. Very measurable. So service and sales we're in control. Very good point. Yeah. So speaking of in control, gave me a perfect segue into a question I wanted to ask <laughs> or a comment. Can you talk a little bit about the connection between personal and professional goals? So entrepreneurs, they kind of go together. Mm-hmm. You know, entrepreneurs aren't clocking in at eight and leaving at five, a true entrepreneur. <laughs> a entrepreneur clocks in at eight and leaves at five, unless they're just brilliant and have figured that out and figured it out. But to me, an entrepreneur is a mindset. It's a lifestyle. Mm-hmm. It's 24 seven. You're constantly thinking. You're constantly, and it shouldn't be like, oh shoot, I can't stop thinking about being creative and, and ways to build my business. You should be celebrating that you have that mindset. And so I think that personal and professional, when you're an entrepreneur, they go together. Now, mm-hmm. if you're punching a clock and you're going in at eight and you get off at five, probably your personal and professional aren't going to come together. But an entrepreneur, wow. you know, if Blake calls me, if you call me at nine o'clock at night and you want to talk business, an entrepreneur like me, I'm going to be all ears. Um, Somebody that's not an entrepreneur will probably not not appreciate talking business at nine o'clock at night. But oh yeah. yeah. It's but it's what you know the thing that I want to recommend to your audience, Blake, is don't take things personal. If there okay. was one thing I would do over again, I took I still do. I, I'm still a work in progress. Um I still take things personal. If you don't do business with me, I'm really blaming myself. And that may not be it. And, you know, so you've got to find a way not to take things so personal. And I think that will help. Good advice. Appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah, Probably far too many people are too hard on themselves and you have to separate that out a little bit. You have to separate a little bit. I think it's very healthy to be hard on yourself. Entrepreneurs, the majority of us, we don't get a paycheck unless we create it. Yeah. I mean, we have to create the check and we have to sign it. So, I mean, entrepreneurs have a, a higher bar to jump yeah. 
because we're not guaranteed we're going to, you know, we're going to make any money unless we use our effort and unless we do all, you know, be hard on ourselves and be critical. I mean, I started out with 500 bucks in my pocket and no resources to get any more. If I didn't sell something, I didn't eat. So I learned entrepreneurship before it became a buzzword. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that was the definition of it. You already knew it was there. Oh, yeah. Just... I couldn't spell it, but I knew what it was. Yeah. <laughs> and you remind me of something, you know, speaking of terms that are popular and we're hearing a lot about. And folks who maybe are being hard on themselves because things haven't changed enough for them. The term that we hear a lot is the great resignation these days mm. or the big quit or whatever term you want to use. My question to you is when you think about that group of folks who are ready to move on, who are ready to do something different, and there's probably a lot of them listening to these episodes. What do you see as far as themes or trends and what's caused that movement of late? Well, I think one of the big reasons why people leave their jobs to look at something new, start their own, is work environment. You know, they just came out with a fact this year that of the top 10 reasons people leave their current employer and the great resignation and they do their own thing or they go somewhere else is 68% of the people say that they don't enjoy their coworkers. They don't enjoy their work environment. Um, I do, con I do uh, culture consulting for companies, and I really enjoy it because I'm a third party. I don't have to have a filter. I tell it like I see it after I interview all the employees. And I just got a call yesterday from a company I did last year, 20 employees. I interviewed each one for an hour, and they unloaded on me about the company and this and that. Really? Well, this has been almost a year, and I got a call yesterday saying that they're back to the same old um, way that they did business and oh. that people are quitting. Well, you've got it's, – it's, it's leadership. I really think that if people are quitting, I think it has a lot to do with leadership. Now, you can't stop everybody from leaving, but – you know, what does it take for a leader of a company, a manager, an owner, um, anybody in leadership to stop by your office during the day? Blake, just wanted to let you know how grateful we are that you are here. We're a better company because you're here. Mm -hmm. We don't see enough of that. We don't see enough of gratitude, praise. People need that. I guarantee you, if somebody praises their employees over and over and really makes them feel like they matter, guarantee you they're not going anywhere. And if they do, they'll probably go to their leadership or their manager or owner and give them an opportunity to keep them. Good point. So I think everything starts with leadership, especially with the great resignation. My opinion. Yeah. Don't give people a reason to leave you. Yeah. A notice to leaders that they really need to be on their game. They need to be. Yeah, you got to step it up. These people depend on you. You know, coming to work should not be you. You should. The ultimate goal of a leader is to have their employees get up in the morning, look at their significant other and say, I get to go to work today. Yeah, that's the ultimate goal of a leader is to have their people excited about going to work today. You know, Van, I'm so glad you said that because as you were starting to talk on that topic, I was thinking of the large companies, probably because you started with you know, some of the organizations that you've consulted with, but it occurred to me midway through, what a great message yep. to people who are just getting started or thinking about starting a business, yep. particularly in this labor market, right? We've had a tight labor market Ooh. everywhere for a while. It's even tighter now. Yeah. But it's such a valuable asset, and you have to treat it that way. And you can't forget it just because it becomes more routine. Yeah. That asset is always your most important asset. It really is. You know, people want to feel like they matter, Blake. I mean, I'm going to tell you, if, if I'm working somewhere or working with somebody and they don't make me feel like I matter, what's going to keep me there? I mean, we don't know what people's personal lives are. We don't know what their home lives are. How do we know that the bright spot, the good thing that will happen during their day is coming to work? Let's yeah. make it enjoyable because the more enjoyable we make it for people that work there, the more productive they're going to be 
and the better off the company is going to be. So entrepreneurs, if they're planning on hiring people, you better learn people skills because it's going to be a tough road if you don't. Very true. Very true. I was thinking of something that I told my wife when I started this business, and that was, I actually like Sundays now Mm -hmm. because I was my own boss. And I had great bosses before. But to your point about create an environment and create an environment for yourself Mm -hmm. and for your team where you want to be there. How many people on Sundays get part of their Sunday is getting bummed out because they know they're going to work on Monday? Yeah, Me. yeah, that's the truth. Was. And but we we can make that better. We can find ways to make it where they want to come to work, you know. And I think it's really important. You know, why not make Mondays? I mean, be creative. Why don't you serve breakfast to all the employees on Monday? Would that make them want to get excited about coming to work on Monday? Yeah, it could. At least if a the, little bit more, right? If the first hour is fun time, I mean. We have the ability to make and change protocol. We, we write the handbook. Business owners and leadership, we write the, the company handbook and the policies. Let's make them to where it's people-friendly, co-worker-friendly. And I want to tell you something. You've got to do something really hard to keep that, you know, conformity and, the, and happiness. If you've got a bad egg that's stirring things up, they've got to go. It's brutal, but they got to go. I had 350 people in my firm, and we could have had 1,000. But I did not take everybody that wanted to work at my firm because I knew their attitude. I knew that they may not, they may be too negative. But I had to let top producers go because they were upsetting the apple cart. And, you know, if you've got somebody in your company that's keeping this per- people I told you that called me yesterday, yeah. there's a couple people that work in that firm that are making people think about leaving. Hmm. So, you, you know, you've, you've got to either correct the issue or they have to go because yeah. you got bad eggs. People aren't going to want to work with them. So that's part of the hard conversations you have as a entrepreneur. But it's all learning. We're constantly learning. Yeah. Yeah. I could talk to you about this forever. I know we have to wrap up. And boy, what what a great landing spot with constantly learning. But before we go, how can people learn more? How can people learn more about your consulting, your success coaching? What are the different ways folks can get a hold of you, Van? Thank you, Blake. I appreciate you asking. So the best way is vandeeb.com, V-A-N-D-E-E-B.com. They've got all my contact information. My email is van at vandeeb.com. I'm very accessible, and I pride myself in uh, returning uh, people's calls or texts immediately. Yes, you do live that. (laughs) I do. I try to get back with people immediately because guess what? Does that make them feel like they matter? Mm -hmm. i got to practice what I preach. So, But thank you for that. Yes, vandeeb.com, and they can get a hold of me there. Good. And, and a little shameless promo. So if you go to that website, sign up for the newsletter. You, the thank motivational you. bits that you send out, yeah. I mean, it's it, meaty, good yeah, stuff. Yeah, thank you, because my newsletter is all my past experiences. I, I, I write them, and it's really cool because they, I get comments from all across the world saying, I needed this today, or I shared this with my entire company. Right. And they can sign up for my newsletter at, van, at, at vandeeb.com, and they get it once a month. And it's an easy one-page read, but it's just stuff that hits home that I know that we all need as entrepreneurs. Yeah. But thank you for that. And thank you for being here. Really appreciate it. I'm feeling motivated just Uh, having done this podcast, and and I hope that our viewers will feel the same way. Well, I'm grateful for you as a leader and as a friend, and uh, you're doing a lot of great things to help people, Blake. So I wish you continued success. Thank you. Very kind of you. And thanks to all of you for listening to another episode of the Heartland Franchise Guy. No different than Van's newsletter, Don't Keep Us a Secret. Subscribe, follow, and share. You know we're out there on all the podcast platforms and our YouTube channel. So if you know somebody that you think would benefit from some of this great material about goal setting and staying motivated, please share it with them and share the podcast. Thanks, everybody, for joining us. And one more thank you to Van Deeb, our 
our host today for <laughs> the Heartland Franchise Guy. Thank we'll you. see you again on another episode very soon. <laughs>